How are you, my fans, sneak peepers, and curious friends? I am difficult and demanding. If you want to know my real name, then hold still, and I might bring your wish to fruition. Before we begin, you can find this podcast show in iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Blueberry, Google Play Music, TuneIn, YouTube, and Stitcher. Now, unlike the other people in your life, I actually care about what you think. So meet me halfway, take a tiny moment, and give my podcast and each episode a review rating. This is the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast, keeping it real, uncensored, and shooting straight between the eyes. The third eye, that is. I am going to hit you with explicit truth. This solo show is outrageously honest and keenly witty with a view into life. Yes, I said life. That's what we do every day when we wake up from sleeping. We are living life. Well, some of us at least. Moreover, I hope to provide you with gut-wrenching laughter and a touch of wisdom. Let's get something straight. Really, really straight. I am truly, actually, habitually, and shamelessly difficult and demanding, and I completely own it. Now, I don't ask for much because I expect and receive it all. I firmly believe that if you expect shit, you will receive shit. What does that mean? Well, it means expect nothing but the best and don't settle for less. Now, as always, I, your host, Tara, am keeping it real and uncensored. So, unplug from life and dive all into episode 10 of the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast, keeping it real on the ridiculous world we live in. Today's show is called Checks and No Balance. This episode is an expose on our political system. I am revealing some riveting information about our beloved Democratic and Republican parties. I am planting some seedlings of truth to expand your awareness into action. Finally, if you do not act, then you can kiss your kale chips and exotic coffee beans goodbye and say hello to gnawing on tree bark during the winter months. Before I begin, I am going to do a call out. What's a call out? Well, it's not a shout out. I am calling out you motherfucking lurkers. If you have entered my world, then be honest with yourself about it. You want to be here, and you know I want you here, so follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Finally, climb aboard and enjoy the entire show, because I am giving you plenty of ridiculous honesty. Once the podcast episode ends, I am keeping it going on my Instagram page at Difficult and Demanding, and on my Twitter page at Mrs. D and D. Hi everyone, I am back and I'm back just in time for you not to fully recover from my last episode. And before I begin the actual show, I want to tell you a little story. This week, I was driving my kids to school and we were listening to the radio. And while we were listening to the radio, a woman had called in and she asked the radio host to help her get proof that her boyfriend was cheating. So they put a plan together that the radio host would call this gentleman at work and they would pretend to be flower shop owners and they would let the guy know that they were holding a promotion and they were giving away free flowers just to get the word out about their new shop. And the guy was like, you know, how did you get my number? Is this a scam? Do you need my credit card number? No, da, 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 da. And they were telling him, no, we don't need your credit card number or anything from you. We just need a name and address of the person you would like to send the flowers to. Now, keep in mind, the girlfriend is on the phone listening to this the whole entire time. So after they finally put the gentleman at ease, he did give a name. And the name that he gave for the flowers, it wasn't his girlfriend. He gave the name of the girl that he's working with. And basically the girl is the person that his girlfriend suspected him of cheating. And after she heard that he wanted to send the flowers to her and he 
left the message like, I look forward to working more late nights with you. The girlfriend lost her mind on the radio and she just, she went off on him. And he was so shocked. You know, he eventually hung up the phone. After he hung up the phone, the lady, she stayed on and she was telling the radio hopes, you know, oh my gosh, he's actually cheating. Um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I'm thinking to myself, first of all, your instincts already told you that the motherfucker was cheating, but you decided not to trust yourself and you wanted to get proof. Okay. Now your ass got the proof. And now you're sitting here thinking, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Bitch, have you lost your goddamn mind? Because if you already suspected him cheating and you were going to get proof that he was cheating, you should have probably had enough common sense to realize that the probability of you finding some proof was quite high, which means that you should have had a plan. Now, let me tell you this. If it was me and if I was her, let me tell you what I would do. After that bitch ass hung up the phone like the punk that he is, I would have then proceeded to either call in sick from work, or if I was at work, I would have become magically sick. Then I would have took my ass home and I would have got copies made of all those dick pics that his punk ass sent me. First off, then I would have went into the dirty clothes hamper and I would got his filthiest fucking underwear. And then I would have got the dog poop from our little puppy that he bought me. And I would have got some of that dog poop. And I would smear that dog shit inside his underwear. And I would have got as many pairs of underwear that I can. So once I got the pictures of his dick pics. And I got his fucking shitty ass roadkill underwear. I would have then drove my pretty ass to his job. And then in the parking lot, I would have strategically placed his dick pics with his name on it and a pair of his shitty ass underwear with his name on it on his co-worker's car. And then I would have took the remaining shit and I would smeared it all over his car and I would have basically said, you cheating, lying ass, mother, dirty dick, motherfucker. That's what I would have done. There is no way, no way that you should ever put yourself in a situation where you don't trust yourself. I don't give a fuck if you don't have proof. You are your proof. You have to have enough love and respect to realize that, you know what? Something's not right. Something is telling me that it's not right. And I need to trust myself. Her bitch ass boyfriend's telling her, I didn't do anything wrong. You actually haven't caught me doing anything. You know, this is bullshit. This is nothing. I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't done anything wrong. I didn't done anything wrong. You can't fall for that weak ass minded shit. Cause let me tell you something. I've been married for 13 years, okay? And I tell my husband, look, if you ever get bored of my pretty brown ass, all you got to do is let a bitch know. Let me know. Let me know if you want to stick your wick into another bitch. Just let me know in advance before you do it, okay? Because you'll come to me and you'll say, look, uh, you know, uh, you know, Tara, see, you know, it's been a while and, you know, someone's caught my eye and, you know, it's been real. It's been good. But, you know, I'm bored. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, OK, so, you know, what the fuck up? What's the fuck up? What, what, what are you trying to say? And he will say, you know, well, I met someone and, you know, we're really interested in each other and we we light each other's fire and we do all these wonderful things. And, you know, I I really want to pursue that with her and I would say okay are you sure he'll say yeah well you know you know future's not guaranteed but you know if I don't try I don't know and we've been together for so long and it's so routine I need something from like no 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 I get it I completely understand and you know what thank you so much for telling me in advance and as soon as that motherfucking conversation ends I will do an about face And I would be on the prowl. Yes, I said I would be on the prowl. I would be looking for the next dick that I could play duck, duck, goose with. That's exactly what I said. I would be playing duck, duck, goose with dicks. Find motherfucker I want. Duck, duck, goose. Drop it like it's hot. That's exactly what I do. Toss that motherfucker to the side. Duck, duck, goose. Drop it like it's hot. Because you know, if you can do it, I can do it. It's not a thing at all. But what I'm telling you is, don't let people tell you some bullshit. Once you find your truth, 
if that's what you require, if you require, if you require proof for your truth, that's what I said. If you require proof for your truth, once you get that motherfucking proof, you better have a fucking backup plan because you look weak as fuck when you sit here and say, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Don't fuck with me. That's what I tell you what to do because I slay motherfuckers. That's exactly what I said. I slay, not slay as how the ladies use it today. I slaughter bitch ass punks who try to fuck with me. Don't fuck with me. You see, my husband, he's crazy, but he's not a motherfucking fool. I don't play. I don't play at all. I don't play other people, and you can be damn sure that I won't get played. So I felt very, very sad for this lady because you have to have clarity. You have to know your purpose. You have to know your worth. And you can't let any other motherfucker define that shit for you. You have to have it from the get-go, from the gate. Because people will try to tell you this, that, and another motherfucker because it suits their purposes. But you're making yourself look like a fool. So even if you never get proof, drop his bitch ass. Because just like you found him, there's 10 more where his ass came from. And you know what? If you love once, you can love again. If you never want to motherfucking love again, it's your prerogative. But don't let someone willingly play you. And when you get what you're seeking, don't sit here and say, I don't know what the fuck to do. You bitch, you better figure that shit out. Figure out real fast. Because I'm telling you, if you fuck with me, I will ruin you. You won't even see me coming. I don't give a fuck with the girl. The girl I ain't got a problem with. She's doing whatever she needs to do. The only person I have a problem with is the motherfucker who's committed to me and lying in his face. I'm going to snatch your tongue out of your mouth. I'm going to wrap that shit around your goddamn neck. And then I'm going to chain your ass to the fucking bed. And then I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass. But I'm not going to leave any marks or any proof. I'm just going to, after I finish, I'm going to leave your motherfucking ass there. And I'm going to let you ponder what it was like for you to stick your wick into another bitch. And then... Once you realize that I am uncertifiably crazy, we can go our separate ways and live a happy life. Because I bet you, you won't want to meet my ass in your next lifetime. Believe that. Let's get this show started now. I'm going to start with our political system. And our political system is defined by a set of of social norms, just like anything that involves us as humans. There's a set of norms, a way that we behave and interact that is acceptable to the society that we live in. And that includes, you know, school, work, politics at home. There are a myriad of different social norms that we are expected to abide by on a day-to-day basis. But today I am focusing on the norms of our political system. Our political system norms are, they were defined or created centuries ago by our country's founding fathers. And the principle or what they were seeking was a vision of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Those are very specific, but also very general terms because for each person, each group, it means something completely different. And as a society, society overall, we typically try to have a more overlapping interest in regards to what life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness means. And when those start fraying or going down different paths, it creates a lot of problems. It creates a lot of issues, as you can see, as far as what's happening, happening in our country politically. Now, Back in the day, in the 1800s, when, you know, our nation was growing population wise and they wanted to create a more civilized and more structured environment for this country because it was no longer fresh and brand new and wild. They wanted some structure, some boundaries. They wanted to know what locations were a part of this nation and, 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 you know, what is not a part of this nation, who is a citizen and who is not. So back in the day, there was a, um, a party and one party was the 
Federalist Party. So there wasn't a Democratic and there wasn't a Republican Party like we know today. There was a Federalist Party and then there was an anti-Federalist Party. And the Federalist Party was more interested in having a centralized government, a very um, heavy handed, a very large government that interfered, that was like big brother over um, our citizen and our economy and everything else like that. And the anti-Federalist group wanted a more decentralized government, a more less government, smaller government. And they wanted to have, I guess, more privilege and liberties at a state level and not have the federal government interfere. Over time, that anti-Federalist Party became the Democratic Republican Party. So yes, what we know today, we have a Democratic Party, which is, I guess, term liberals, and we had the Republican Party. They are separate today. But hundreds of years ago, the party was known as the Democratic Republican Party. And you're thinking, how can that be? Because the Republican Party and the Democratic Party that I know today, they're very different. They're like a dichotomy. They're at opposite ends. Well, you have to think back in time where it was just the 13 colonies and the population was much, much less. And people were coming here for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the people that came here, they had a similar vision. They wanted to have a similar life that was different from what they had um, had to endure in, in England. They wanted the flexibility and the freedom to live life however they deemed they wanted to live life. So at that time, you know, I would say I would equate the Federalist, Federalist Party similar to the monarch, monarchy in, um, in England. And I would equate the anti-Federalist Party as rebels and um, the Wild Wild West pioneers, people who were trying to define what their life was going to be and not have it defined by someone else's legacy and rules. So when the anti-Federalists, which became the Democratic Republican Party, came into play, they were known as rebels. They were the anti-monarchial group. They oppose the views of the monarchy that was over in Europe. And they were the first opposition party. They were the first opposition political party in our nation that went up against those more monarchy type of views that came overseas when people started migrating here. The Democratic Party is 200 years old. It is two centuries old. And when they were formed, it was a different life back then. Expectations were different. Life expectancy was different. Quality of life was completely, completely different. So when these visionaries came together to create a roadmap for where this country was going to go, I don't think they ever expected or envisioned to have the world that we have today as far as the diversity and what we were able to achieve, I don't think they were able to see that far. They were able to see far, but not that far. Because at that time, we're dealing with Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson. And these two men, they were visionaries in their own right. And you're probably trying to figure out, like, where am I going with this? I am going somewhere with this, so please be patient and try to get some history, some education, so you can understand where I'm going. These were two men that came from overseas to this nation here because they wanted to define, they wanted to chart what their life was going to be. They didn't want to be pegged or slotted into a certain way of life by continuing to live in England. So that is why people came overseas for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But you have to define that if you are coming to start a new city, a new state, a new country, you have to define what that entity is going to be. Just like at home, you have to decide what type of family you're going to be, what type of household you're going to run. You have to set those norms. So people like Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton, they were very strong, intelligent, visionary people, but they had two different visions of where they wanted this nation to go. And that's kind of how political parties, they get started. You have two men with overlapping and opposing views. Now, that's conflict. 
And from my experience, conflict is good because it creates balance. If you have one, everything leaning to one side, that's imbalance. Anytime something is imbalanced, I guarantee you something is going to be wrong. You have to have a tug of war. You have to have pushing and pulling. That is just how life works. So there was, there were no Democrats. There were no Republicans. It was just about how strong, how powerful, how overpowering, uh, uh, how overreaching or how powerful our government was going to be. That what that is basically what it was about. They were trying to set our nation up. They wanted to set up a government. They wanted to have some rules, some laws, um, some norms, and they wanted to make it official. The question was, how big, how powerful was our government going to be? That was it. No Democrats, no Republicans, none of the nonsense that we hear about today. It was just the, the state centralized or decentralized government. That is what it was about. And the Federalist Party and the Democratic Republican Party were trying to figure that out. And how do you figure that out? Well, you figure that out with votes. So that's where we began. By 1820, the Federalist Party actually disappeared. And our nation only had the Democratic Republican Party. We had one political party at that point in time. And like I told you, in life, you have to have opposing forces. You have to have a male, female energy. You have to have on and off. We cannot exist without having opposites. Night and day, man, woman, two eyes. You need two. You need opposites to balance out everything. So what happened when we had one political party? Well, they broke apart. But the reasons why they broke apart was due to slavery. Slavery was the catalyst that broke the Democratic Republican Party apart. So originally, when we were first starting this country and solidifying it, we were forming political parties based on centralized or decentralized government. As time progressed and we settled in our boots and we settled in our political and our judicial system and how we were going to be as a nation, then the political systems or the political parties, they actually evolved into another issue, which is, which was slavery. So slavery was what split our one party up and they became Democratic and Republican Party. Now, let me tell you something that I bet you didn't know. Today in this day and age, when you think about the Democratic Party, you think of it as liberals, party for the people, diversity, labor party, all that. I got some news for you guys where you may or may not know, but I'm putting my money on the fact that you don't know. Back in the day, the Democratic Party supported and or tolerated slavery. And they wanted to help move slavery out west. That's correct. Our so-called labor party of today was the motherfucking group that wanted slavery to spread throughout the United States of America. And the Republican Party, yes, I said that, the Republican Party was the party that was against the progression of slavery out West. Now, what the fuck do you think about that? When I found that out, it blew my goddamn mind because it means everything And nothing at the same time. Now, here's another tidbit. The Democratic Party also opposed civil rights reform after the American Civil War. So here we have a party in 2018 that is putting itself out there as a party for the people. But if you look at the origins of this party, the origins of this party, it is completely the opposite of what it was, or what it used to be. Now, I don't, I mean, it's like, how do you go from there? It's like, okay, I had this vision. I grew up with this vision of this Democratic Party being a party for one and a party for all. And originally that wasn't the case. Now with all political parties, you know, it's it's built up of humans. And As with humans, we can change our mind. We can change our approach. We can change. So at some point in time, the mid 20th century, the Democratic Party made a dramatic 
ideological change and they realigned themselves and they basically reinvented themselves as a party for the people. At that time, when they reinvented themselves, they became supporters of organized labor, civil rights, minorities, progressive reform. They favored government intervention in the economy, but not um, government intervention in the private lives of citizens. Now, they made a drastic 180 turn. Now, I sit back and I think about that and I ponder. It's like, okay, you have a group of people. You have one person who stands strong and proud in their principles and what they believe. And then you have that group do a complete 180 degrees. It's like, hmm. Either you're crazy as hell, like manic crazy, or you go whichever way the motherfucking wind blows. Like you don't have any principles. You will go where you think the money's going or where it's green because anybody with strong values and conviction, there is no way that you can do an about face, a dramatic about face on all your principles. So when I'm sitting back and thinking about this, I think these smart ass so-called Democratic Republican visionaries at that point in time saw which way the wind was blowing and they did not want to become obsolete like the Federalist Party. So they say, you know what? Fuck our principles. Fuck what we believe. We need to give the appearance of appearing to be X, Y and Z. Because this is where I think this nation was going. So don't get me wrong. These motherfuckers were smart. They were very intelligent and they could see the wind turning before it actually fully turned and they got ahead of the curve. So what does this mean? Well, to me, what this means is that today in this day and age, we look at the Democratic and Republican Party as 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 like biblical as like these entities etched in stone that cannot be changed, cannot go away, that will always be here. And as you can see, that's not always the case because they can change what they're about, what they mean. We all started because of the British monarchy here and we didn't appreciate how we were being treated, our opportunities, where our futures were going. So people came to America to make a difference in their lives and future generations. Now, when they set that up, they had a certain way of life. And when the nation grew and started to change, they realized that, you know, either we're going to change with it or we're going to become like the motherfucking dinosaurs. So the Democrats changed. They completely changed. Now, I want to get to the crux of why this is important today, right now, for you and I and, and future generations. I have shown you that a political party, a system is built by humans And what they stand for, what their mission and vision statement is or was, that can change. It can change completely. So I look at the Democrat and Republican Party, and I always saw them as two powerful, just, it's it's like this boogeyman or this, it's this entity in my mind that's larger than life itself. And when I read and learned about the history of how they started and what they mean and how they've changed, I realized Now is the time. I believe that the Democratic Party doesn't know what the hell it's doing. And I believe the Republican Party has lost its damn mind. We started off in this country with the Federalist Party and the Anti-Federalist Party. The Federalist Party went away. And we were left with the Anti-Federalist Party, which became the Democratic Republican Party. The Democratic Republican Party then split, had spinoffs, if you like to call it, people that watch reality TV had spinoffs and became became the Democratic and the Republican Party. I now think the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are obsolete. And let me tell you why. If you look at where we started as a nation and where we are today, the face of our nation has changed. Our standard of living, our quality of life, Our beliefs, who are the people who are part of this country are no longer what those men used to be because it was mostly men that mattered back then. But today you have white men, white women, you have people of color, men and women, you have all different types of people. And I truly believe that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party can no longer represent what we need in our political system. 
I believe now is the time, because if you look at all the fighting, the infighting within the Republican Party, the Democratic Party is fucking chasing around, chasing each other's tails and sniffing each other's fucking coochies. I don't even know what they know what the fuck is going on because they represent no one and everyone. They don't have a clue. And I think now they're trying to rebrand themselves like they did 200 years ago. But can you have people, spineless, shape-shifting people representing what we are in America today, what we look like in the nation today. I don't believe they have what it takes. And I believe both of these motherfucking organizations are obsolete. But what do we replace them with? We have to replace them with groups and organizations that represent what we are today, what we look like. I believe there's more good, sane, tolerable people in this country, in this, in this country that outnumber all the crazies. And I believe we need to band together and create an opposition party against the Democratic and the Republican Party. As far as I'm concerned, the Democratic and Republican Party we have today, those bitch ass people can merge themselves back together because they're irrelevant. They're irrelevant. They're serving no one but themselves. The Democrats can't figure out what to do. They can't figure out how to tie their motherfucking shoes. And the Republicans are too busy stealing the motherfucking cookies and the cookie jars. Those motherfuckers are taking the cookie jars. They're taking the cookies. They're taking the motherfucking ingredients. They're taking every motherfucking thing while the Democrats are figuring out how to tie their shoes. And all of us are suffering because of their lack of leadership. We need to have new political parties that represents the face of what this nation is today. Now, Fortunately and unfortunately, Democratic Party and Republican Party, they serve their purpose. But with everything in life, you can't stop change. And I believe now is the time. You have all these women, these women getting together, they're marching to for change. And they're marching to get people to vote for Democrats. I say fuck trying to get people to vote for Democrats. Start a new party. Stop investing our time and machineries and mechanisms and entities that basically are frauds. They promise one thing, they do another. These political parties, they need a reality check. They need to realize that they can also disappear like the Federalist Party, but it cannot and it will not happen unless we band together. So that is why I am boring you all with this information, because I want you to realize that that is what America is built on. It's built on creating opportunity and seeing a crack and blowing that bitch open when you see it. That's what America is about. You see a crack, you kick that bitch open and you create an opening for change, because if we don't do it, they're going to ruin Everything that our ancestors have built, these motherfucking Democrats and Republicans are going to ruin it. We need something powerful, more powerful than the Green Party. We need a party that represents who we are. And when I say who we are, I don't mean that we all have to like the same shit. I'm not saying that we all have to like everyone of a different color, race, creed, religion. That's not what I'm saying. But there's some basics that we share in this country, some basics, underlying basics that are our foundation that these po- both of these parties cannot sustain and do not support. And I think we need to recognize that. Pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and show these motherfuckers what it's about. Because you know what? The Democratic Party lasted for 200 years because it has many faces. And that's all it's going to do. It's going to shape shift into some other shit. But let me tell you something. A shape shifter just gives you an appearance of being something. But the fact is, it's not that. And we need a political party that is what it says and does what it is. And if you don't understand what the fuck that means, I will say it again, slowly. We need a political party, one or two, that are opposing the Democrats and the Republicans. And we need this party to truly represent what we are in 2018 with internet, social media, technology. We need this party to be what it is and to be only that. Do what you say and say what you're going to do and be that. Turn everything against itself. Thumb your nose, turn this shit up upside down. Yes, we have a president that some of us are in favor for and some of us 
some of us are not in favor for, but what he's actually doing, he's exposing vulnerabilities. When you see a vulnerability, that means there's an opportunity and there's an opportunity for positive change. We have a president and a party majority that is dividing us. At any time a nation is divided, let me tell you, the last time our nation was divided, we had great wars. We had riots. And when leadership is intentionally dividing our country or allowing our country to be divided, I am telling you what they're beckoning. They are beckoning turmoil. And with turmoil comes war. And none of us want to have war. Because when you start poking people's buttons and you start making them angry and you start having them see that we're not the same, we're different, then fighting ensues. And we don't need a war. We need to unite. And since the Democrats don't have the fucking power and the Republicans are sitting by letting this shit happen, we need new blood. We need new, true American blood to organize and go against these two powerful establishments and show them that you are also a non-motherfucking factor and your time is up. Now I'm shifting gears slightly because I want to actually provide you with some more reasons of why I believe it is time for us to have new political parties. When I say new, I don't mean the Democrats getting a makeover, a facelift and coming to, to show themselves to be something they're not. And the Republicans coming back with some remorse saying, we understand, we're sorry, let's make, no, no, we're sick of the bullshit. When a motherfucker cheats on you and you catch that bitch ass cheating on you, you need to set him free. And I think it's time for us to set the Democrats and the Republicans free. And let me tell you why. In the past, there was always some type of pretense and our politicians always had a creative, a creative spin, um, you know, some public relations spin of why they were not able to deliver on what their campaign promises are and were. And we understood because we're smart. We understood as citizens that, you know what? They tried, they still care, but they had to compromise and we understand. But in this day and age, now, today, they don't give a fuck. These politicians are changing positions, lying. Everything they committed onto voters is just a fraud. And they're blatantly doing it. And they don't give a fuck. And when they don't give a fuck, it's clear that they're not serving us as, as voters and citizens. They are serving a higher power. They are serving something that they believe is greater than us as, as citizens of this country and voters. And I think Trump, Trump has changed the rules of the game. He has made it acceptable to behave in such a brazen manner. Normally these type of tactics were hidden behind closed doors and they were done in the business world and, uh, and other types of, of, of areas in life, but it was never done in a political way because there was a level of respect, respect for the constitution, respect for our history, respect for, you know, what we are as people, because at the end of the day, we're all people. But today it's like, oh, y'all stupid ass voted me in. Thank you very much. Fuck you at the same time. I'm going to take care of my largest campaign donors. They're blatantly lying. They're shameless about it. And they're supporting legislation that clearly benefits their donors. They're large campaign donors. That is who they're serving. That is their higher God. That is their higher purpose. It's not us as a country. And it's no longer the, the pretty dog and pony show they used to do for us. They're not doing it. This has turned out into a a Roman orgy. So we went from having a pretty, you know, nice subdued dog and pony show with their political bullshit. They have gotten rid of all that and they have turned this shit into a Roman orgy. They're fucking us all the way around. Politicians are fucking the citizens. They are fucking our economy and they cannot be trusted. It's clear that they no longer care. They figure, Hey, you voted me in. I got two years. I'm going to make the most of it. If you stupid ass vote me in again, I'll take that too. But if not, I'm good. I made my connections. And when I get out of this position, I'm going to make a lot of money. 
So we are like citizens of this country, the United States, are like a bunch of endless supply of glory holes. And if you don't know what a glory hole is, Google that shit. Because you're getting fucked up the ass. We're all getting fucked up the ass by the Republicans and by the Democratic Party. Trump, our president, has appointed people from the ranks of corporate America and placed them into key regulatory positions. And they, these people that he's appointed and put them in government, are handing out favors to their corporate cronies, corporate buddies, like, you know, ass in the red light district. That's what they're doing. They're handing out fucking ass like you're in the red light district. You are my buddy from the corporate world. I'm going to hook your ass up because I know when this stent is over, whether it's the full term or short term, I'm going back and I'm still getting rich, bitch. That's basically what's going on. It's not even about us, the common man. It's not even about us. We are not even a factor anymore because we were stupid enough to vote in a con man. And because we were stupid enough to believe his reality TV show, this is the consequence of what we get. We have people from the business world who are in key regulatory positions, creating laws, changing laws, impacting lives, and they're handing out favors to their business buddies like ass in the red light district. And if you don't know what the red light district is, Google that shit too. You should Google it right away. Serving in government was supposed to be, is about honor, integrity, dignity. And all of that has gone out the window. It doesn't even matter anymore. And it's very sad because the reason why this nation was started, because people were running away from a monarchy that was behaving just like this, selfish, didn't care about the people, only were taking care of their own or people that they can get something from. And that is why America was started. Now, here we are here, hundreds of years later, we're on top of the world. We are the leader in the world. We are the face of what people are supposed to be. And I see it just crumbling before our eyes. Like the British Empire. No one thought that the British Empire would collapse. But guess where that shit is now? The Roman Empire. No one thought that shit was going to collapse. Look where that shit is now. The Mongolian Empire. Look where that shit is. At. Look, look where it is. The Byz Byzantinian Empire. Look where it is. So I'm sitting here watching America at the peak, at the pinnacle, and these fools, these clowns are throwing it away. They're taking it for granted, and we are sitting back letting it happen. We are letting it happen. We are going back to a time where the average man, the majority, are irrelevant. We're going back in time where it's about money. It's about profits. It's not about quality of life. It's not about the welfare of the people. It's not about the wealth, the welfare of the work environment. It's about the chosen few. That's it. Now, if you don't know much about history, you should go and see how the British monarchy treated people, the people who chose to come here on their own. You should see why they left. You should understand why they left, because that exactly is what is going on here. And that's why people say, you know, history repeats itself because that's what's going on. But we, there's still time for us to stop it. There's disregard for workers in this country, which is a new trend. There is disregard for working conditions. There's disregard for pollution. Look at the EPA and what they're doing. Look at the FDA, what they're doing. There's disregard for the quality of life in America. So when your government is changing things that have been put in place, because it had to put it in place because fucked up business people were making decisions that benefited themselves. So our government had to step in because people can't do the right shit on their own. They have to be forced. They have to have a foot, a boot on their goddamn neck. All that shit's being taken away. And we're being told, you know what? These people, they're going to do what they're supposed to do because they're going to do what they're supposed to do. Now you and I both motherfucking know that if a motherfucker, if you say, if you let a motherfucker know that he can cheat, guess what the fuck he's going to do? He's going to do it. Nine times out of ten, a motherfucker's going to do what you let them do. And they're going to get away with what they fuck they can get away with. So why would these businesses who basically want record profits, their stockholders want increasing profits and wealth? Why, 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 if they can cut corners now, why would they spend money where they don't have to? That's why I say these these. Political parties that we have now, 
they have lost the plot or maybe they haven't lost the plot. I think their time is just up. They're trying to take us back in time to the industrialization age. During the industrialization age, it was great because you know what? It provided jobs for people who weren't able to go to college and get educated. It was able, it, it made it possible for people to be able to get better housing and it, it, it created a higher standard of living. But also what you forgot during the industrialization age was the pollution, the sickness, the disease, the lack of regard. And that's why labor unions got started. And that's why there were power in numbers because businesses, managers, and owners, they didn't give a fuck. They drove around in their Rolls Royce and their Bentleys while you trudged and mud shit and all kind of filth on the street. They didn't give a fuck about you. So now we're going back in time where business moguls, political moguls are now able to influence your life at the office and at home. That's what it was like in the industrialization age. But when the government stepped in and raised the standards of what was expected from companies as far as the employees, as far as the environment for the country overall, your overall life, life expectancy, how long you live, all that shit improved. So now we have a president who's a so-called motherfucking business mogul, which I don't see how, because his daddy gave him a million dollars a hundred years ago, which is a lot of motherfucking money if you basically do the calculation. And he has never really worked a day in his life. And all he does is sets up corporations which fail. He can file for bankruptcy and he never really loses anything. So you have this con artist who is a president who basically likes to get his dick sniffed and sucked which people are happily doing to get him to change legislation. And at the end of the day, it's going to impact your ass. It's impacting you. It's impacting you. The government was the police. It was the hander. It handed out justice and handed out balance because you can't trust that people are going to do the right thing when money's involved. So now we have a greedy, self-centered, aloof businessman who is our president. What the fuck you think is going to happen? What is happening? We're having, they're having a bonanza. There's a regression going on. As far as everything, there's a regression. Why do you think a tax plan was passed that doesn't really favor you? It doesn't favor you at all. Okay, you get a $50 increase in your check. But look how much you're paying out in taxes. The money that he sold supposedly gave you as a decrease in taxes you are not getting all that money because it increases your wages. And when your wages increase, your taxes increase. The money's not really coming to you. And that so-called bonus, like companies like Wells Fargo, they gave a one, they gave a fucking bonus to the employees. It's all a fraud. It's a fake. It's an illusion. It's a mirage. It's like someone handing someone a fucking shiny $20 bill when they're fucking broke. And then they hand you that money. You know why? Because they're going to fuck you from every which way to Sunday. The next minute they, you turn your head and you get over it, they're get, the, the dick is coming. The shit is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's not real. It's not real. You have companies like Wells Fargo setting up fucking fake accounts and customers' names. Do you think these, and this is with, with government regulation, do you think these motherfuckers are going to do the right thing with the government being decentralized and not focusing on laws? Hell no. So what is it that we don't seem to understand? I think our memories are too goddamn short or we can't deal with reality. I don't know what the fuck it is. People lie because they can. People manipulate because they can. And it's our job to look for the motherfucking truth, not listen for the fucking truth. Because if you're listening for the motherfucking truth, you're going to be listening for a long goddamn time. You need to look for the truth because if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it walks like a duck, then it's a motherfucking duck. And right about now, we have a lot of motherfucking ducks walking around making fools of us, and we're letting it happen. We let it happen. And I don't know how, but we let it happen. Now, while you guys are over there paying attention to Donald Trump's stupid-ass motherfucking tweets, the life that you know, that you've grown to expect and become used to, is being eroded, is being erased right before your very motherfucking eyes. For example, privacy. Congress is now letting ISPs, internet service providers, sell their users private browsing data. 
That's what I said. Congress, our majority Republican Congress, is now allowing internet service providers, ISP, sell your personal browsing data. So the motherfuckers that were complaining about privacy, like our president saying my shit was tapped, my shit was tapped. The only thing that was motherfucking tapped was his goddamn brain. But they are allowing your private information, your private browsing data to be sold. So all you motherfuckers who are buying dirty panties online from Japan or traveling to Bangkok to Bangkok, your shit is being sold. So any of you who are in respectable positions, white collar, blue collar, whatever, and you go on to Bangkok for some sex tourism, or you find you fucking sniffing panties for overseas, I want to let you know your shit is going to be exposed really, really soon. Our fraud president who was complaining about being spied on is now allowing your information to be sold for guess what? More money, more money. Cash, moolah, dollars, money. That is what's being happened. Now, let's, let me also tell you something. Trump's labor department is making it easier for employers to keep the tips of servers. Now, last time I was aware of this, servers aren't paid a lot and they make their money on tips. And this government of ours, which the head person in charge is our president and our president has a number of business in the hospitality industry. He's allowing these motherfuckers to keep the tips from their workers. How greedy can your ass be? Like how greedy, when is enough enough? Like when is enough enough? He is setting it up so employers can keep a portion of the tips from service industry workers. And he's also making it difficult for workers to organize against chain restaurants. Huh? So why are you sitting here and then one of them go tweet, 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 tweet. It's all a hoax. It's a goddamn distraction. He's doing shit behind the scenes. And basically he's keeping you guys distracted with fucking reality TV from the over office. Like, don't you get it? From the Oval Office, you're watching reality TV. He's picking fight with people so he can distract the media from what the fuck is really going on. And what he's doing is going to have long-term effects. Do you know how long and hard people have worked to get you the ability to have tips to pay and take care of your family? Work for the ability for you to have some form of privacy because we don't live in motherfucking Russia. We live in a democracy. And if all your information is being sold out, you have no privacy. So the president was talking about motherfucking privacy. It's putting your dick pics, your dick pics on blast. Your shit is being put out there. And he's also making it easier not to pay overtime. Yes, OT, the OG, our president, the OG, our president, is making it difficult for people, employers, Making it easier for employers not to pay OT over time. Now, how you blue collar workers feeling right now? The people who voted for this man, thinking he's going to give you a better future, a better way. He doesn't give a fuck about your ass. He is robbing you in front of your motherfucking face. Matter of fact, he's come up to you. He sweet talked you, took your money, slapped you in the fucking face, and then kicked you up the motherfucking ass at the same time while he's sitting there befriending you, and you're reading his stupid-ass tweets. That's what the fuck he's doing. He is the greatest magic man, con man that ever existed. So each time you are diverting your attention to his stupid-ass fucking Twitter fights, you are being robbed here, you are being robbed there. Look at how he got elected. It was dirty. It was down and dirty. He lied, he manipulated, he dodged, he ducked, he got elected. This reality TV bullshit that he put on for you, that is how he got elected. And you all told yourself, you know what? This is all part of politics. But when he steps into the Oval Office, everything is going to be okay. No, motherfucker, it ain't okay. If you were fucked to begin with, you're fucked many times over now. Now what the fuck you going to do about it? Because we have three more years of this shit. He's already disrupted a lot of shit in the first year. We have three more years how are you going to dig yourself out of this shit? Because if you're in the hole now, you are basically buried. You're dead 
you're done because you listen to a lying ass motherfucker with orange hair. Now, all politicians are liars. I'm not going to lie. Democrats and Republicans. But this man, he came out of left field with no experience, no history. And you came with the presumption that because he looks successful, he must be successful and he's going to make this country a success. That's what con men do. That's how they get your money. That's how people run pyramid schemes and steal millions and millions of dollars and go live overseas without going to jail because they're con men. And the better the con men, the more money you make. So let me tell you, you have been sold a dream and your dream is gone. It's dust. It's a mirage. Now you can sit back and be sad and depressed or you could stand the fuck up and listen to what I'm telling you. The fact that the Democratic and the Republican Party needs to cease to exist and we need to rise up like the salad bowl we are. All different factions of us put our fucking stupid ass differences aside and show these motherfuckers what's up and show them that we're going to take the reins and we are going to keep moving forward because we cannot have them take us backwards because that's exactly where they're trying to take us backwards. Did you know that the GOP stands for grand old party? Yes, the Republican party, the party that you hold near and dear and you love greatly, which is called the GOP stands for grand old party, grand old party. So when you think back and you close your eyes, what do you envision? Well, I envision a grand old time. I envision a bunch of elite, uh, privileged, wealthy, powerful men sitting in some type of, you know, dark, danky speakeasy with burlesque dancers, you know, twirling them motherfucking titties around, serving them fucking cigars and uh, basically rubbing their ass up against their dick. That's what I picture. So our GOP party, grand old party, is having a grand old time. They're on their website. They talk about supporting the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. For who? That's what the fuck is. That's the question you should be asking. For who? Who exactly they're pursuing this for? Because most of you people... You don't have real estate investment income, but that's what they put through on the law in the last minute. Pass through entities that allow them to take their profits. So whose inalienable rights, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness are they pursuing? The grand old party, or the grand old timers, as I like to call them, are taking their cues from a man who likes to thumb his nose up at the establishment. Yep, thumb his nose at the establishment. They are, they have lost the vision of what they stand for. And I believe that they are imploding. I believe the democratic party is exploding. And I believe the grand old timers or the grand old party is imploding right before our eyes. And anyone who is charismatic with some leadership skills should stand up and pull people together and bring us together and railroad all these motherfuckers, just railroad them. For example, The wall, the wall between the U.S. and Mexico. You got the literal wall, the literal wall, and then you have the invisible wall. And the invisible wall is the wall for the uh, highly skilled labor that's coming from overseas. And the Mexican wall is the wall to keep um, migrant workers and people like that from coming through. The people who come through to do the jobs that Americans don't want to do, we want to build a wall to keep those out. Because once we keep the Mexican people out, we build that wall. Uh, people are going to be lining up. America's going to be lining up to pick motherfucking cauliflower and strawberries from the field, right? That's, that's, cause, I mean, that's exactly what I'm thinking. You want to build a wall from people who are helping to put food on your motherfucking table, saying they're taking jobs from you. Last time I heard, I don't think any motherfucking American, okay, let me, let me say, I know for sure you can't get no black people out there picking nothing from motherfucking field. First off, okay, so let's start there. And I know Caucasians have no interest in picking a goddamn thing from the field. So who is going to pick the shit from the field? If you build a wall, who is going to pick the shit from the field? First off. Now, second, you have the invisible wall, the immigration wall. People who are coming in on visas for school, for employment. Okay. 
Now you're saying these people are coming over here taking our jobs. Okay. So if we stop bringing in people, skilled labor from overseas for these highly skilled college educated jobs, okay, cool. Americans are ready to fill those positions. Not, but okay, let's suppose that Americans are ready to fill those positions. The reason why these corporations are hiring people from overseas, let me tell you why. It's because of money, people. It's because of motherfucking money. Don't you get it? It's for money. It's about profits. If they wanted to pay your motherfucking ass an American wage, they would have hired your ass. They're going overseas for a reason. They want the highest skill for the lowest cost. That is what capitalism is motherfucking about. So how are you going to preach that you don't want a socialist society But you're sitting here motherfucking complaining because you want socialist entitlements. Let me explain to you what I mean. You want the borders motherfucking closed from people coming overseas, taking our jobs. I get it. Cool. Got it. Cool. I get it. But that means you are ready to take the same motherfucking job for the pay that that other motherfucking person was willing to take. Are you willing to do that? Hell no, you're not willing to do that motherfucking shit. So what the fuck are you talking about? You want your goddamn cake and eat it too. You want to live in a capitalist, democratic society, okay? But you don't want to motherfucking compete. And then when you're ready to compete, you're saying, you know what? I don't want that job. That job is not paying me good enough. Well, guess what? Companies have to keep existing. They need people to do the goddamn jobs. So if you're not willing to take the goddamn job, even though you are qualified because the money's too low, they're going to hire another motherfucker who's qualified also, who's willing to take that pay. So you cannot have a capitalist society with socialist entitlements. You can't say that these people, other people are here on welfare and things like that, and they're entitled, and they're not working hard as me. Okay, take the job for the less pay. Because if you take the job for the less pay, then it's cool. But you're not going to do that, are you? No, because you want the job at American pay. And let me tell you, American pay rates are high. They're high for a reason. Because we are a first world country. We have a certain standard of living. And we need that money to pay for things. But let me tell you, when labor costs go up, other costs go up. And when other costs go up, you can't afford certain shit. Let me repeat. Your wages, your salary is a cost, is an expense in the business. And when your salary or wages go up, You eat into the owner's profits and nobody starts a motherfucking business to work for free. You start a business to get rich, bitch. You start a business to make profits. So if you sitting here motherfucking complaining about, okay, don't give my fucking job away to foreigners. I want the job, but I want the job for the right wage, for the right wage. Then you know what? The employee is going to give you the raise. They're going to give you the the, the rate. They're going to give you your wage, but they're going to raise the price of what they're selling, which is going to make that good, that service more expensive. And if that good and that service is more expensive, that means more people can't pay for it. If more people can't pay for it, that means that company you work for does not have customers. If the company you don't work for does not have customers, they're going to lay your motherfucking ass off. So you started off educated without a job and you're going to end up educated without a motherfucking job. This is what capitalism is about. It's about making money. It's not about giving your motherfucking money away to other people. So how do we find a balance? You have to find a balance between a healthy balance between hiring highly skilled, lower paid with highly skilled, higher paid. That is the balance I'm talking to about. You need balance. If everyone wants to get a high wage, we won't be able to afford shit in this country. There are slogans going around courtesy of our lovely ass motherfucking president that says buy American, hire American. Yes, yes. Buy, you should buy American. You should hire American. But guess what? We have to keep inflation in check. What the fuck is inflation? Inflation is higher motherfucking prices. It means that your $1 cannot buy as much as it used to. Because once we start buying American and hiring American, everything is going to go up higher. And then your motherfucking ass is going to be sitting here complaining about how you can't buy shit. How you have to take one slice of bread and and, and divide it into fucking four quarters for you and your four family members because you can't afford anything else. So before you sit around talking about other uh, other, uh, boogeymans about who's impacting your standard of living, there is a grander picture. There is a larger picture. It's called supply and demand. And your people are probably sitting like, 
how the fuck she knows what she's talking about? Let me tell you how I know what the fuck I'm talking about because I'm motherfucking educated. I have a business degree with a focus in economics and international motherfucking economics. So I know what the fuck I'm talking about and I'm sharing that knowledge with you. There's a ripple effect. The same ripple multiplier effect that our Republican parties are talking about where if we lower taxes, then the government, then these corporations are going to give workers more money. No, the fuck they ain't. They're hoping that these companies will give you more money because they gave them more money. But if the motherfucking companies didn't give you more money before and they're sitting on record motherfucking profits, why the fuck they going to pay you now? They're going to put that money in their fucking accounts. So you have to look at the whole picture it's not about just you it's not just about me it's about all of us and it's about making a way for all of us so you have less foreigners more jobs available but i know you're gonna have a problem with the salary and when you get the salary you want then you're gonna have a problem because there's not enough customers that can afford to buy the product And then when you don't have enough customers, like I said, you're going to lose your job because there's not enough sales. And with revenue comes taxes. And with taxes comes money for programs like schools, education. So everything is interconnected. We are connected. Even though we may look different, act different, like different food, have different religions, love different people, fuck differently, whatever. We're all interconnected and we can't be so fucking selfish and blind and realize, you know what? Let's close our borders. Let's close our borders. Let me tell you what happens if you close your motherfucking borders. Let me educate you for those who don't know who who have forgotten. Let me tell you what happens. You cut off borders. You are essentially impacting trade on some level. Trade as far as intellectual intellectual capital. What is intellectual capital? That means intelligence, uh, innovation, creativeness. You are basically putting a damper on that. And if anyone who's anyone who have who has hung around people who look the same, act the same, think the same, that's typically a cult. Yeah, I said it. I said a cult. If you cut off yourself from the world. And you close your doors and borders as much as you motherfucking possibly can. You are creating a cult. Now we all know what happens in motherfucking cults. And when they drink the fucking Kool-Aid, they ass motherfucking die. So I have no interest in being in a country that's a cult. I like the inflow and the outflow of people and information. Because at that point in time, you always have a reality check. You realize that, okay, maybe what's going on over here is not normal. Okay, maybe what's going over here is normal. You have a reality check. But if you live in an isolated world, you have no barometer. You have nothing to check. You think this is a normal way of life. Kind of like what happened to that family in California with the 12, 13 kids and the motherfucking parents had them chained to a bed and didn't let them go outside. They start to think that that's a normal way of life. No, the fuck it isn't. So before you go around saying, close the borders, close the borders, I just gave you some information to think about. Now, let me also tell you something. Back in the day, when trade routes were not available, you know, ships and all that, there is a reason why people starve during the winter and they ate really well during summer, the harvest time. Let me tell you why. In winter, not much grows. So if you want to close, build a motherfucking wall from Mexico, First of all, there's going to be no one to pick your goddamn tomatoes and your kale. You know, motherfucking kale chips you like to have and motherfuckers sitting around fucking eating raw broccoli, fucking farting all over the place in your glass and think nobody don't motherfucking know. Yes, we smell your funky, stinky ass. Just let you, know. you won't get all that shit if you close our borders. There was a time back in time, people don't know, but I'm going to share it with you, where during the winter time, people had a very hard time because there was not much to eat. The reason why you can eat motherfucking salad and tomatoes in wintertime is because of our neighbor, Mexico. Mexico. They're able to grow the shit that we're not able to grow when 80% of, other, 80% of the rest of our country is fucking snowed or too cold to fucking do anything. 
So you need to think about that shit. You think that you're going to fucking close the door on, on our neighbors and think that's not going to impact it. It's going to impact you. You're going to be gnawing a motherfucking tree bark to survive the goddamn winter because all the shit that you come to expect to see in the grocery store will cease to exist. Now, how's that real shit for you? How, how's that real shit for you? And here's some other real shit. Corporations are setting on record profits without, without the tax reform. And if they weren't reinvesting that much in your ass then, reinvesting in workers, reinvesting, reinvesting in the factories, uh, paying people more money and higher wages, what the fuck you think they're going to do with a tax, with a tax degree? Do you actually think they're going to do that shit? No. So if you actually are believing that this is what's going to happen, you're wrong. The GOP, the grand old party, the grand old timers, you know, these pimps and motherfucking hustlers, these fucking thieves, they're lying. They're lying. They are lying to you. They have your ass out on a hope, a wing, and a goddamn prayer. And last thing I heard, you can't get very far on a hope, wing, and a prayer. Hard motherfucking work. Looking for opportunities and make shit happening. And not buying people's bullshit is what gets you ahead. You see, we have, we have a deficit. And we have just lowered our taxes and our government is shut down because we don't have money. We don't have money. Our grand old party passed a tax reform bill that they don't even know what the fuck is in the bill, but they passed it through so fucking fast. You know why they did it to save face. They did it to save face face to say, you know what? We have a Republican president. We have a Republican Congress and we have a Republican Senate. And at least we got this done. It may be fucked up. It may be wrong and it may be laden with problems, but this is what they were able to achieve. And you know why they did it? Because they wanted to keep their donors happy. Not your bitch ass and not mine. They did it to keep their large party donors happy. The rich people who have the pass-through entities making money, making more money, they didn't do it for you, bro. They didn't do it for you. So when they're sitting here telling you, blame the fucking people coming over the wall, the people coming from overseas, they are all the minorities, or all these people messing with your fucking traditional values, it's all a hoax. It's all a lie. You need to have trade to have a capitalist society if you produce stuff and you produce too much and you don't have people to buy you go out of business or stuff spoils so that is why you have trade and you send shit overseas but to send shit overseas you have to allow things to come into your country so trade and open borders are very important look what happened to russia when it closed its borders Look what happened to India when it closed its borders. Look what happened to China when it closed their borders. Yeah, these nations don't like to talk about it. They don't want to admit that they were wrong. So if you continue listening to a man that's going to tell you that closing borders are the right thing, you are going to be in for a rude awakening. Because once we go down that path, it's going to be a long, dark, hard road to get the fuck out. And you don't want to go down that path. The life that you know today will cease to exist. And it will be a long, hard, arduous road to even come close to what you think you have right now. So competition brings out the best. You watch your football, your sports, all these sports games, and you want to see the best athletes working hard, sweating hard, breaking people's backs, winning. And you want to see them compete. You want to recruit the best people from here in this nation over the world to be on your sports teams. Then why the fuck wouldn't you want the best people to come here to help make better products and service so you can keep having the life that you have? Now, I'm not sure if I'm telling you some shit you do know or I'm sharing some shit you don't know or I'm giving you something from a different perspective. But either way, my goal is to have you take something from this. You have to look for the truth. You cannot listen for the truth. I've lied before. You've lied before. You know how it works. Look for the truth. 
and you shall find it. Don't trust the motherfucker to lead you to the right place. Trust yourself. Trust yourself and leave this show that you're listening to right now. Leave it with the understanding. We need an opposition party that will go against Democrats and Republicans because these people have outlived their usefulness. These entities can be taken down. Just like with everything, we broke free of the monarchy here. We broke free. The United States, the 13 colonies, broke free from England. And it's now time for us to break free from these 200-year-old establishments that have been useful. Don't get me wrong. They have been useful. But their life is over. Expiration date has been hit. And it's now time for us to pivot before it's motherfucking too late. So let's use the turmoil that's being created by our president. Use it as a catalyst for change, for improvement, for tolerance, for inclusiveness. Because if you keep letting these people divide us, I don't want to be in this country with another civil war. I don't want to be here over a race war. I don't want to be here for that. It destroys so much. And if we keep going down this path, We're going to be divided, and when we're divided, you have riots, and then you have war. And none of us want our sons or our daughters killed over some other stupid people's bullshit who only care about themselves. Are you disappointed this has come to an end? Well, it doesn't have to. Reach out and let me know what you think about this episode and my podcast. You can try and slide into my DM. But I will kick your ass out. So I suggest you hop into my DM on Instagram at Difficult and Demanding or Twitter at Mrs. D and D. Or leave a comment on one of my posts. Now give, give, give my episode links to friends, family, associates, frenemies. Hell, give it to your enemies. Actually, I don't give a damn who you give it to. Just give the shit to people and bring laughter to others and show your love for this podcast mark your calendars set a reminder because i am returning to you for another episode of i'm difficult and demanding podcast keeping it real on the ridiculous world we live in my next ridiculous episode is called bye motherfucker bye the release date for episode 11 is february 2nd 2018 Now, don't you forget what I said earlier. Follow me, follow me, fucking follow me. Because I know you're looking forward to me. And shit, I'm looking forward to me too. Let me know that you listened to this episode. If you are scared to tell me what you think, don't worry. I promise I won't blast your ass too far. (laughs) I'm crazy as hell. Instagram at Difficult and Demanding and Twitter at Mrs. D and D.